let us learn some of the application of indefinite integration. One of them is going to let us form an equation of a curve from a gradient function. So let's say I have a curve here, but I don't know what is the equation of the curve. But they tell us that as long as we have the gradient functions, we will be able to find back what is the equation of the curve. So why is that this? is Because when we have, let's say y is the equation of our curve, so usually if we do the differentiation, which is dy over dx, we can have our gradient functions. But now they already give us the gradient functions. How to reverse it back to find back the equation of the curve? We can just do the anti-derivative, which is the integrations. So basically, we just need to integrate the gradient functions. Then we can find back what is the equation of the curve. So since they give us the gradient function, this one, we're going to do the integration of it. So what's dy over dx? It's just 4x minus 2. So if we integrate this one, we have 4x, 1 plus 1, the power increased by 1 and divided by the new power, minus the integration of constant just multiplied with the variables. This is why we have 2x over 1. But of course, this is the indefinite going to plus c. So this is why we have something like this. And we're going to simplify this one. It becomes y is equal to 2x squared minus 2x plus c. But this is a problem here. We still have the integration constant. So how to get rid of this constant? Huh. Now they're going to give us one of the point on the curve. So once they give us the point on the curve, we can just substitute the point into our equations in order to find c. So let's say y is 7. So 7 is equal to, the x is equal to negative 1. So negative 1 squared minus 2 of negative 1 plus c. So we just need to solve the linear equations. 7, negative 1 squared is 1 plus 2 plus c. So this is why we have 7 equal to 4 plus c. So we know c must be equivalent to 3. So now let us step by step again. Just substitute our x and y coordinate into the equations to get what is the answer for c. So we do the linear equations. Step by step, we get the c is equal to 3. So once we know c is equal to 3, we can substitute back into our equation of y, which the c is now 3. So we can say that our curve is just y is equivalent to 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. This is how we reverse from the gradient function to become the equation of a curve. So let's have a recap of whatever that we have did. In order to find the original equations, they must give us the gradient functions and one of the point on the curve. So how do we do? Step number one, integrate the gradient functions. Step number two, substitute one of the point on the curve to find the C. And the one last one, rewrite the equation of the curve. So basically they tell us that it's just the integrate the gradient functions gf, substitute one of the point given, substitute the point, and form the equations. So it's going to be girlfriend selling popcorn every day. Let's try to do it one more time again. Let's say given the gradient functions, which is 18x squared plus 10x. So remember dy over dx, just the differentiation, and it's the gradient function of the curve. And the given one of the point on the curve is negative 2, negative 10. So they tell us that in order to find the origin, original equations, we must make sure that we have the gradient functions and one of the point on the curve. Since we also have both of them, we can start to do now. So first, integrate the gradient functions in order to find the equation of the curve. So we can say that equation of the curve must be the integration of the gradient functions as here is 18x squared plus 10x with respect to x. So if you do the integrations, so 18x power increased by 1 becomes 3 over 3 plus 10x. 1 plus 1 is 2 over 2. Of course, it's indefinite with plus c. So this is why we have 6x cubed plus 5x squared plus c. But this is incomplete of the equation of the curve because we still have c here. So how do we get rid of c? 
So after GF, we know it's the SP sending popcorn. Substitute one of the points that they're given here, which is negative 2, negative 10. So negative 10 is equivalent to 6 bracket negative 2 power of 3 plus 5 bracket negative 2 square plus C. So if we do this one step by step, we have 6 bracket negative 8 plus 5 times 4 plus C equal to negative 10. 6 times negative 8 is negative 48 plus 20 plus C is equal to negative 10. And we just do the linear equations. So we have negative 28 plus C equal to negative 10. So in the end, we have C is equal to 18. So we just have a recap. When we have the equations, but it's incomplete because we still have a unknown, which is C. Substitute one of the point and solve the linear equation, we get C is equal to 18. So girlfriend selling popcorn every day. E is just rewrite the equations. Since we know the C is 18, we can write down as y is equivalent to 6x cubed plus 5x squared plus 18, and we are done. So this is going to be our answer. Let's have another example again. Let's say the gradient function of a curve is ax plus b. So now everything is in terms of unknown. And they say that the gradient of the curve at point 0, 06 is 5. And the gradient of the curve at negative 2 at is negative 7. Find the value of a and b, and then find the equation of the curve. So first, they give us the gradient functions. So we can return that as dy over dx. This is the gradient functions is equivalent to ax plus b. But we know that in order to find the equation of a curve, we must know the gradient functions. But now everything is in terms of unknown. So what should we do? But at least they could give us the information of 0, 6 is 5, negative 2, 8 is negative 7. So we can try to substitute the point first into the equations and do simultaneous to find the value of a and b. So we do it step by step now. This is just the gradient functions, but they tell us that when the point is 0, 6, the gradient is 5. So we can say that the gradient is 5 because this is the gradient functions. So when the gradient is 5, it equal to 5, equal to a, but the x is 0. So we substitute 0 plus b. So basically, we can say that 0 plus b is equal to 5. And of course, we know b is equal to 5 for now. So after we found our 5, we are going to proceed to find from A from the second information. They say now the gradient is negative 7. So negative 7 is equivalent to, what is our x now? It's negative 2. This is why we say A bracket negative 2, and our B is 5. So we just do the algebra, negative 2A plus 5 is equal to negative 7. We move negative 2a to become left-hand side, 2a, negative 7 go there, become 5 plus 7. So a is going to be 6. So after we found our a and b, we can substitute into our gradient functions so that we know what is our gradient functions and it's no longer in terms of unknown. So substitute in, we have 6x plus 5. So since now we already have gradient functions, we also have the point on the curve is it possible to find the equation of curve? Yes. Just by first integrate the gradient functions. So we can say that the equation of the curve is just the integration of 6x plus 5 with respect to x. So just as like usual, we can do the integration by increase the power by 1 and then divided by the new power. Same thing here. Just divided by 1. And this is the indefinite. That's why we have plus c. Is why we have y is equal to 3x squared plus 5x plus c. This is incomplete because we still have c. So this is why we need to carry out the substitute the point to eliminate the unknown. So how are we going to do is substitute one of the point. So which point you will say? I will say that either one will do. I will show to you. Let's say I choose 0, 6. Then I will have something like this. If I choose negative 2 at, I will have something like this. But in the end, both of them also will give you c is equal to 6. 
So girlfriend sending popcorn every day. So E is equations. So we write the equations. So we have 3x squared plus 5x plus C. But C is no longer unknown. We know it's 6. Then we are done for these questions. Let's have another question again. Let's say the gradient function is normal to the curve is 1 over 6x minus 2. So can you see that? They say this is the gradient function that is normal. So normal means it's a perpendicular. So it's not the gradient of the curve that is tangent, but this time it's a normal to the curve. And the curve will pass through the point 2, 2. So in order to find the original equations, we must have the gradient functions and the point. But the problem here is, this gradient function is normal to the curve. So you want to find back what is the gradient function that is parallel to the curve. So what we're going to do is, we're going to integrate the gradient function like usual. But before this, we're going to apply the perpendicular gradient formula, which you learn in form 4, coordinate geometry. m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1. So let m1 to be the equation that is normal. Another gradient must be the one that is parallel. Because let's say if this one is m1, the another one must be m, m2, because they are perpendicular. So just by using this one, can we find m2? Yes, m2 is just equivalent to negative 1 divided by 6x minus 2 over 1. Because when we want to divide a fraction, we backflip it and we times it. So we have negative 6x plus 2 as our gradient that is parallel to the curve. So after we find back what is the gradient that is parallel to the curve, then now we can do like usual, just integrate these gradient functions. So we can say that the equation of the curve is just the integration of negative 6x plus 2 with respect to x. So we're going to do the integration, negative 6x squared over 2 plus 2x plus C because it's indefinite. But it's not complete because why? We still have the unknown which is C. How to find the C? We can just substitute the point to find C. Since they give us 2, 2, we substitute into the equation of this one. We can find out that our C is just 10. And the one last step is just rewrite the equations. So the equation is this one, which is the incomplete one. But now we know that our C is 10. We change our C to become 10. Then we are done for these questions. Let's have the final questions. The rate of change of displacement function of the car is ds over dt. So a rate of change, we know, it just means that it's a d over dt. Of what? Of displacement. So we know s is represent the displacement of the car. So this is just basically the gradient function of the displacement functions. It means that it's the gradient of the displacement graph. So they say that this is the car and the ds over dt is equal to 10t minus 2. So what is ds over dt? So eventually if you learn physics, rate of change of displacement is eventually the velocity of the car. So given s is equal to at meter when t is equal to 1 second, find the displacement in meter when t is equivalent to 3 seconds. So what do they want is, they want to find, find the displacement. Do we have the equation for displacement? No. So eventually, you want to find the equation of displacement, you can think of it like this. S is the equation of displacement. If we take the differentiation of with respect to t, we have ds over dt. So in order to find back the original equation of displacement, we're going to do the nt derivative, which is the integration. So basically, we can just say that the integration of ds over dt will be equal to my s equation, which is respect to dt. So now we're going to do to so integrate the gradient functions, which is this one. If we integrate this one, we know if we give me back the displacement equations. So 10t, the power increased by 1, become 2 divided by 2, minus 2t plus c, because it's the indefinite. 
but still we have the C that is blocking us to have the equations. So we know we can just substitute the one of the point. Since this is a displacement time graph, they tell us that S is at meter and T is one second. So S is at meter and T is now one. So five bracket one square minus two bracket one plus C. So we can just simplify it. One square is one, so it's five minus two plus C is eight. Eight is equal to three plus C. C must be equivalent to five. So now we found our C. So again, just substitute one of the point given to find C and C is five. Now we can just rewrite the equation by using S is equal to 5t squared minus 2t plus c. But c, we already know, which is 5. After we are done, we are looking for the displacement when t is equivalent to 3 seconds. But since we already have the equations, so we are fine. So we're going to substitute t is equal to 3 into the equations. So substitute the 3 into the equations. We can find that the displacement is going to be 44 meter and we are done. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.